be Jenny George. She is not the nuclear crazy, but she's had a go at Labor's energy policies this weekend and said that nuclear energy should be at least considered to supplement renewables. She also said that Labor is so determined to reach its target of 82% renewables by 2030 that it was more important than anything and it doesn't matter who gets in the way. I think we need more people. She describes herself as old Labor. She says, the, the party left me, I haven't left the party, Caroline. And we need more people like her. And, and she's been at pains to, to come out and say this. She didn't want to do it. Uh, for a short time, she stopped paying her party dues, which, which hurt her after all those years in the ACTU and then the Labor Party. But she's looking at it going, look, as a, as a union leader and then a Labor rep, I looked after workers, particularly people who were in industry, who benefited from these industries. Um, and I look at it now, and this is not the Labor Party I remember. Yeah, I mean, she's a really interesting character. First female president of the ACTU. She's obviously really feels deep in her heart that her party has abandoned her, the values that they once had at their core, which is to put workers at the, mm. at the fore. And she has felt so strongly about this that she has really been part of this huge letter-writing campaign, hoping that the Prime Minister and other people in the party were going to take up some of her suggestions. When that didn't work, surprise, surprise, she's come out and given this interview. Um, and I think it's really interesting to hear from those people who were so instrumental to the party talk about how it has abandoned them because it's something we talk about here on air all the mm. time but when you're hearing it from old labor people maybe they'll wake up and 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 listen to it and, it, and it's not just old labor freya because uh, if you look at all the polling in terms of support for nuclear energy mm. the largest group of support actually comes from young people and i suspect that's because you know the boomers and a certain level of gen x you know grew up with this all oh, chernobyl and all this sort of stuff we're going to have kids with three heads if there's a nuclear disaster all this kind of thing whereas those of us who've uh, sort of been post all of that can take a look back and go okay well they've got nuclear energy in the uk they've got it in france they've got it all over the us people aren't being born with three heads there haven't been any major nuclear disasters for years let's just do this thing but you've still got Bowen uh, running around saying, oh, it's the most expensive form of energy. Well, has he looked at his power bill lately? Where's the $275? You can't tell me that's cheaper. That's exactly right. And young people don't care about, you know, the, the scare campaigns of the Soviet era with their poorly maintained nuclear power plants. Young people are much more open to innovation and new technology. Uh, and so I think it's really interesting that we're seeing Gen Z diverge from the left of politics on this issue and a really great opportunity for the coalition to go hard on nuclear mm. and pick up votes among Gen Z. And that's right. On the, the cost of living point, I mean, Bowen promised the little Labor government promised on 92 occasions before the federal election that power prices would go down by $275. Well, reality check, they've gone up by over $1,000 in some parts of Australia, including Western Sydney, which is the Labor heartland here in New South Wales. And this speaks to the identity crisis going on within Labor. They're being run by this woke inner city elite, but a lot of their base are actually working class Australians. So which, which one are they going to go after? And I think I think we're seeing them abandoning their base, which is unfortunate for the Labor Party, but great for the coalition. And on Sounds that, like my last 684 columns. Yeah. <laughs> um, on, that, on, that, on that point, though, Paul, you've got Di Lee, who, of course, in Western Sydney, fought off Christina Keneally. And Di Lee has been mentored by Jenny George. You know, we, we talk about the fact that people in Western Sydney and, and workers and whatever have been left behind by the Labor Party. How much of an opportunity is there going forward to do almost that sort of teal thing that has happened in the eastern suburbs, but the Di Lee version through Western Sydney and Western Melbourne, etc.? Absolutely. Look, I, I, I certainly think that there's going to be a couple of other people that are going to get close to what Di Lee's been able to do in Western Sydney, because the reality is that for a long time, some from, someone from central casting was able to be dropped on insert out of suburban area, because people uh, reflexively vote Labor, they'll turn around and do it. But I think people in all forms of politics, be it sort of, you know, the 35-plus uh, uh, women in uh, teal seats, they want somebody who looks like them, right? Um, and the old-fashioned sort of uh, person who used to have a trade union history way back when doesn't necessarily look like them. That's it. I think there's two issues um, that are going to cause that creation. 
One, uh, it is immigration, and we'll get to that in a second, but it's immigration cost of living um, that I think is going to pop up, say, your local mayor, somebody like that who's well-known to an area but we don't talk about on TV shows like this. The second issue, I think, is not this election, next election. Can I just put a, believe it or not, a pin in a debate to come? Is that uh, the second Sydney airport is going to have 24-hour noise. Now, the, set, the major Sydney airport that's there now has a curfew. So the people who live in the Prime Minister's electorate, well, they get to be able to sleep uh, peacefully after 10pm. <laughs> people who are going to live in Western Sydney are going to have 24-hour noise. And I think you're going to see the candidates that go close this time or at least start to send their message that Labor's mm. screwing you, you over in three or yeah, three years' time, when it's 24-hour noise over the top of your head, that'll be the final push. So it'll, I think it's a, a two-election strike yeah. strategy, but I think it'll happen. As for the, the nuclear stuff, though, I mean, mm. yeah. Joe, why doesn't the, the Labor Party just say, look, we don't believe it is economically viable, yep. we don't think it's going to happen, which is what they've said many times, yep. but we will lift the moratorium and let the market decide? That's, that's what I think they should do, and I... I Again, I wrote a column to that effect just last week, saying, look, if it's if it's going to fail, let it fail, but let it yeah. fail in full public view so everyone can see it, and that will actually be good for Labor. Um, the numbers, as far as I can tell, don't stack up at the moment because we simply have not got these small modular reactors, which could be game-changers. They're simply not there yet. They're just not there. They're a few years away, it seems, before they're ready to go to market, and then we'll see what we can do, what they can do. But, you know, the idea that you would ban something sight unseen before it's actually got there is just madness. And I think you should always be sort of, um, you know, technology agnostic with things that are as important as climate change. And, and Jenny George is, is interesting in that even though she's a, a creature of the left, she is someone who has to go home to the Illawarra, to Wollongong that she represents, mm. and look those workers whose necks are on the chopping block in the eye and say, don't worry, your job's going to be safe or we're going to find you a new one. And th this was her big sort of um, grail castle moment, if you like, where she was looking through all these stats and saying, well, where are all these new jobs coming from? It's no... And, th again, this is my... And I'm all for climate change and doing something about it. I'm all for reaching those targets. Did you just say you're all for climate change, Joe? I'm, I'm all, all for doing something about climate change. <laughs> um, but you, it has to be... It, it can't be that... It can't be that you're just saying, well, you have to... You know, my job's going to be fine. Yeah. But you have to sacrifice your job. And it also can't be where you say, well, yeah, you'll lose your job, but this other job will be created unless it's a job that is created in the yes. same area True. for the same people. True. And that is what it has got to be. And, and Freya's absolutely right. The Labor Party has been going through an existential crisis um, for the past... Pr pretty much for the past half a century, but it's getting really acute now because the biggest ideological obsession... Uh, for the inner city left of the party, the elite upper middle class left of the party, is climate change, which is um, the one thing that is of the biggest threat to the traditional mm. blue working yeah. class, which is why, for example, the Australian Workers' Union, which is the biggest blue-collar union in the party, is pro-nuclear, because they see this threat coming like a freight train down the road.